terms of GIST Support UK, obviously, as the name says, we're here to provide support to anybody who receives a diagnosis of GIST. And um, the, the objectives of our charity, um, as registered with the um, Cancer, sorry, the Charity Commission, are to promote and protect the physical and mental health of patients with GIST in the United Kingdom. Uh, provide information, support, education, and practical advice to them and their carers. I mean, that's obviously, when we were set up, what um, we were aiming to achieve. Um, the next um, objective um, includes, um, obviously, relief of sickness and preservation of health, particularly by promoting and supporting research. And, um, obviously, it's been our ambition to do that from the word go, but obviously, um, we can do it physically by, um, I suppose, being involved and trying to encourage uh, professionals to um, undertake research into GIST. But in more recent times, because of the fact we've had um, supporters helping us to raise funds, we are now in a position where we are physically um, funding research. And obviously, as an ambition, we want to do more of that, and we can only do it if we have funds, so it's a bit chicken and egg, but the fact that people have very kindly been raising funds for GIST Support UK means we are now able to fund research. So, just to give you a, a quick um, rundown of the research that has been funded so far, um, in 2012, this was the very first, do just correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the very first time we were approached by Professor Judson basically to say that he had a research project that he wished to undertake with his team at the Marsden, which was um, designed to try and um, look back at, um, initially they were talking about 300 patients that they'd had come to the Marsden, and they wanted to go back and retrospectively um, <coughs> obtain the samples that they could for those patients understand, uh, do an, a, an exercise of mutational testing to understand um, what mutation types they were, because in many cases, historically, GIST patients have been advised, you've got a GIST, but they don't know what type of GIST they've got. And through time, it's become more um, obvious that the different types of GIST potentially will respond to different types of treatment. So. Um, this exercise is still ongoing because for a very long time just obtaining all the various samples from the hospitals where those patients who <coughs> were referred to the Marsden had had their operations, it's a very time consuming exercise, you know, because if you make a request for a tissue sample from a tissue bank, it's very rare for them to say, all right, we're going to drop everything and just respond to that request now. <laughs> Usually you have to request it and then you request it again and then you request it again and finally you will get the samples, but it takes quite a while. Um, and I think they're actually up to somewhere in the region of 550 patients rather than the initial 30 that, that are now part of this exercise. But they want to uh, then look at the um, treatment pathway for those patients and understand you know, what happened to each of those patients and relate it to what type they were. And I think at some point they will get some very interesting results, but it's not come to a conclusion yet. So subsequent to that, um, obviously, as you're probably all very well aware, um, I, I got involved with Just Support UK in 2010, and my, my whole focus is to find a cure for my daughter and anybody else with um, a paediatric wild type GIST. So um, we were set a target initially to raise £40,000 to be able to set up a clinic. And uh, as I say, Just Support UK, in collaboration with Dr. Belusu and Adam Brooks Hospital, have started the Paul's <laughs> GIST Clinic. Um, and obviously some of the patients and families that have come along to that clinic have been very active in um, raising funds to try and get to the stage where we can actually then fund research um, that comes as a result of this clinic. So I can't thank the people that help Just Support UK and obviously our initiative Paul's GIST in fundraising. Um, basically without them we are volunteers. We are able to run these meetings because we receive grants from some organisations such as Novartis and Bayer and Pfizer who kindly recognise the need for patients to get together and understand more about their rare condition. But as I say, 
to get other things going, such as research projects. We can't do that without fundraising. So, to date, um, I say a few years ago, um, we were at a meeting in um, Leicester, and one of the patients at that meeting came up afterwards and said they worked for an organisation that did grant funding and raised funds for um, charity, and she'd like to suggest that um, Just Support UK was nominated. And as a result of um, that nomination, um, we were, um, by the end of the year of their fundraising, awarded £80,000. And the whole point of that um, exercise, we said at the outset what we wanted to do with it was to um, secure the future of our fledgling tissue bank. So that money, I mean the National Gist Tissue Bank basically has now moved from Newcastle down to the Royal Marsden and the whole idea is that that's the sort of central place where hopefully we'll be getting tissue samples sent from um, all over the country for all types of gist. And in order to make sure we can sustain that bank, because it's very expensive to transport um, frozen tissue samples by specialist courier to, to the bank. You know, it's hundreds of pounds for every single sample. Um, we need to make sure we've got funds for that. That um, money from UKTB secures the future of our bank. Um, on the Paul's GIST side, um, we were um, a year ago approached by three um, researchers who said they had uh, projects that they would like to um, kick off if we were willing to um, either wholly or partly fund it. Um, we've got Dr. Ruth Casey in Cambridge who was already doing SDH deficient tumour research and by pure coincidence she met Dr. Belusu, who mentioned that some of the patients that come to the Paul's Gist Clinic have an SDH deficient type of tumour. And she concluded it would be, well, we concluded jointly it would be really useful if we could actually sort of piggyback onto her research. So um, we have given um, a reasonably large sum of money um, to Dr. Ruth Casey to include our patients in the research that she's doing. And um, obviously we're, we're very hopeful. I mean, she's already coming up with ideas, but she's, she's going to go through a complete panel of genetics, epigenetics, metabolomics, to try and get to the bottom of what causes this in the first place, but also what potential treatments might be already in existence, but just, we're just not thinking about using them in that particular um, case. Then we've got Dr. Newton Wong in Bristol. Um, he's a pathologist who has spoken at one of our meetings previously when we were in Bristol. And he's um, going through next generation sequencing of wild type GIST samples to try and identify therapeutic targets. Wild type <coughs> GIST, in, in, in um, other types of GIST, they've found a mutation in exon 9 or exon 11. Wild type GIST, they aren't able to identify any places of mutation, so it's difficult to know to target and that's why treating it um, you know is more difficult so um, that's the other project that's we're, we're funding that one in its entirety and um, both of these projects started December January now so obviously we're in the very early stages and the third one um, that we're um, funding at the moment is um, Dr Karen Sisley who is based here in Sheffield and um, Karen very kindly, um, for some while, when we first started the Paul's GIST project, we said one of the things we need to do is to be able to grow wild-type um, GIST cells um, outside of the body, you know, in a laboratory, in a Petri dish. We need to be able to do that because it's the only way we can then start testing potential therapies on cells and see if it will kill them off without testing it on patients and potentially giving them off. So, um, Karen did this as something of a favour for, for quite some while, and I think you've had how many samples, is it seven, eight, seven, over the last, since 2013, so that's over the last few years, um, seven or eight samples. Getting advanced war warning of a GIST patient having an operation doesn't happen that often getting advance warning of a wild type GIST patient having an operation even rarer and then being able to collect that sample and get it to the places it needs to go is quite a feat of engineering. But um, Karen explained to us 
while she was doing this, it needed more attention to be able to get it to move faster because they're slow growing cells and they need to move faster. So um, we have um, allocated some funds to Karen also from the funds that have been raised by our supporters. Um, and we have a medical advisory board who um, they meet at least once a year and we met in January and we're also approached by two further researchers who um, both presented at our medical advisory board meeting and the, the, the board were very impressed with what they were proposing so we're now um, anticipating receiving sort of detailed proposals on what they hope to do and how much funding they will need to do that. So. Um, that will be using more funds, I hope, and uh, we have to keep fundraising to be able to top it up all the time.